In this continuation of our advanced refrigeration, we're going to start talking about a little bit about power distribution. Now, why do we talk about power distribution in refrigeration more than the other terms? The reason is simple. It's because um, in commercial and industrial refrigeration is we're going to, where you're going to see the most variations in voltages and power setups. Refrigeration crosses across residential, commercial, and industrial applications. And in each of these applications, you may see different types of power distribution. And it's very important for both troubleshooting and safety that you realize what you're seeing. Okay. Um, so direct current used to be the way electricity was supplied to consumers to handle all of their electrical needs. But it came with many disadvantages, okay? Direct current is also known as DC. Transmission for long distance without using generation stations to boost the DC current was near impossible. The inability to raise and lower DC voltages and the necessity to use large transmission equipment were other problems. AC current can be transmitted with much less worry than DC and has become the ideal power supply to consumers because of its flexibility. Electrical power is generated at a generating plant by using rotating turbines that are powered by gas, oil, coal, hydropower, atomic energy. The rotating turbines have the effect of a rotating conductor in a magnetic field. The electricity is generated inside the plant and is transferred outside the plant where it is boosted to a large, easily transmitted voltage. The voltage is boosted up to as high as 220,000 volts. It is then transmitted to a substation where it is reduced to around 4,800 volts with the use of a step-down transformer. After the substation, the power is distributed to transformers that step the voltage down to a usable voltage. Or sometimes the power is supplied directly to the consumers who use their own transformers to reduce voltage. You see that more likely in heavy industrial applications. So this is just an example of the power transmission layout. Okay, you have a power plant up here in the top right. You have a transmission station. This is what increases the voltage for the high voltage transmission lines. You come to a power substation where it steps it down to a to a safer level to transmit along the roads. And then you have a, what we have a transformer right before the house or commercial building. 230 volt single phase 60 Hertz systems is what exists in most residential and light commercial environments. Single phase AC current exists in most residences. Most HVAC equipment can be purchased for use on single phase. Any domestic appliance that operates at 115 volts is single phase equipment. It's important to understand the makeup of the 230 volt single phase 60 hertz system because its popularity in small commercial building and residences. Air conditioning technicians must be able to determine the voltage system available to ensure proper installation and operation of the equipment. In some older structures, it is still possible to find single phase two wire systems. This voltage system was used when few electrical appliances were available and there was no need for 230 volt systems. The system has two wires, one hot wire and one neutral. Hot wires are conductors that supply voltage to the appliance. The neutral wire is connected to the ground and is identified by a white color. The ground wire is a safety circuit and is not intended to carry normal circuit current, but provided to carry fault current to the ground in case of a short between the hot wire and the frame of a device. The ground wire is usually bare wire or is green in color. This is the most common voltage that is found in the 230 single phase system. The system contains three wires, and this you'll see inside a breaker panel. It has two hot wires and one ground. We call them L1, L2, and N. So between, look at the picture, between L1 and L2, you have 230 volts. Between L2 and neutral, you have 115 volts. Between L1 and neutral, you have 115 volts. 
In this type of system, connecting either one of the hot legs and a neutral directly to the load will supply 115 volts. Connecting both hot legs directly to a load will supply 230 volts. So more often than not, if you have a light switch or a small appliance or um, anything that's like TV, satellite dish receiver, all of that's going to be at the L1 or L2 to neutral. Your cooktops, your dryers, your air handlers, your condensing units, they would go L1, L2 and get the 230 volts. The electric utility uses a transformer to produce the 230-volt one-phase system. Pay close attention to the secondary side of that transformer. The primary side is hooked up to the 4,800 4, volts supply to the electric company. So on the left side of the picture, we have our 4,800 volt primary from the electric utility. On the pole, there's a transformer. Okay, you then have a center tap. That is my neutral. Your L1 and L2 are also coming out of there on each side. They are my, they are my um, power wire. Okay. Most equipment can operate at plus or minus 10% of the rated voltage. For example, a piece of equipment rated at 230 volts can operate at a minimum voltage of 207 volts and a maximum voltage of 253. The electric company maintains a plus or minus 10% of the connected voltage. Air conditioning equipment has a tendency to operate more satisfactorily on the maximum voltage than on the minimum voltage. And in recent years, Justin has an added note here, I have been seeing more and more power supplies hitting close to the 240, 245 level from the utilities rather than the 230, 207 level range. So the utilities are actually starting to provide a higher voltage to the buildings, and that's to prevent voltage drop when everything's running at one time. Three-phase voltage systems are common in most commercial and industrial structures. Three-phase voltage services supply three hot legs of power with one ground to the distribution equipment and then on to the equipment. Three-phase power supplies are more versatile than single-phase supplies because of the different voltage systems that are available. In most cases, residences do not use enough power to warrant a three-phase power supply. Three-phase power offers better starting and running characteristics for motor than single-phase. Most commercial industrial structures are supplied with three-phase power. The only disadvantage to three-phase power is the higher cost of electrical panels and distribution equipment. There are basically two types of three-phase voltage systems used in commercial and industrial wiring systems. The delta transformer hookup, which will supply 230 volts, three-phase, 60 hertz, and the Y transformer hookup, which will supply 208 volts, three-phase, 60 hertz. The 230 volt three phase or delta system is basically used in structures that require large supply to motors and other three phase equipment. The delta system is usually supplied to structure with four wires, which includes three hot legs and one ground. In some cases, the supply may be three hot wires actually, and the ground is added internal to the structure. The system is unique in that it contains a high leg Connecting a hot leg to neutral or ground provides a range of 180 volts to 208 volts. Connecting to any two hot legs will provide 230 volts. Connecting any hot leg to ground will provide 120 volts. If one of the hot legs in a three-phase delta system is lost, only single phase voltage is supplied and then we call that a single phase condition. This condition can easily damage three phase equipment. The delta system takes its name from the Greek letter delta, which resembles the shape of the hookup. The high leg of the voltage is due to the fact that transformer windings L1 and G is longer than the windings L2 and G and L3 and G. So your L1 to G is longer than L2 and L3 to G. 
Detection of the 230 volt three phase system can be accomplished simply by testing across any two hot legs with a voltmeter. If 230 volts are red, the system is a delta system. The high leg or the longer leg should always be identified by an orange marking. Another method of detection is to check the voltage between each hot leg and neutral with a voltmeter. If the voltage between any hot leg and neutral reads between 180 volts and 208 volts, the system is a delta system. We also have the 208 volt three phase Y system. The 208 volt three phase Y voltage system is common in structures that require a large number of 120 volt circuits, such as schools, hospitals, and offices. The Y system offers the versatility of using three phase AC and the possibility of supplying many 120 volt circuits for lights, appliances, and other small, lower voltage 120 volt equipment. The system is supplied by four wires one ground and three hot leg. The 208 volt system is different from the 230 volt system that it contains no high leg. You'll see the look at the diagram on the right there and you'll see that all the wires are going to be identical in length with respect to neutral, which is ground. Connections between any hot leg and ground provides 120 volts. As we can see in the diagram, there are three legs available. 120 volt power legs. This allows more 120 volt circuits than the, 20, than the 230 volt delta system. The Y system takes its name for the letter Y. All three legs of the transformer windings are equal in length, but in the delta they are not. Detection of this type of setup is easy with the use of a voltmeter. If 208 volts are read across any two hot legs, or 120 volts are read between all three hot legs and ground, the system is a 208 volt Y system. There are also some higher voltage systems available now and they're becoming increasingly popular. So be careful when you're working in a, in a rooftop unit or anything on a commercial and industrial building. These higher voltage systems are used mostly on industrial systems, but in some cases in commercial systems. You'll see them frequently in restaurants. Several high voltage systems are available. You have 240, 460 volt single phase systems. You have 240, 460 volt three phase systems. And you have 277, 460 volt single phase systems. These systems can all be identified with a voltmeter. For example, in a 277 460 volt system, the 277 volt reading is obtained between any hot leg and ground. The system is primarily used in industry, but occasionally their commercial application. This system has no means of supplying 115 volts or 230 volts at a single phase without the use of a separate transformer. You will never see lighting connected to this system. The connections between any of the hot legs and neutral will provide 277 volts. 277 volt is common in commercial and industrial systems to operate fluorescent lighting. Okay, the fluorescent lights in a lot of the large shopping malls, a lot of the large department stores, factories, and large commercial applications, such sometimes even schools, are not 120 volts. They are 277 volts. Connections made between any two hot legs will provide 460 volts. If three phase power is connected, it can be obtained by connecting all three hot legs. Detection of a 460 volt system is easy with the use of a voltmeter. If 460 volts is read across any two hot legs, or if 277 volts is read between the hot legs and ground, the system is a 277 460 volt Y system. So hopefully that will assist in identification and understanding of the different types of power that's available to us. Again, most often residents, it's going to be single phase, 230, 240 volts, 120 volts at the outlets. Okay, as you start working up into commercial environments, you're going to start hitting the three phase systems that are going to be 230, 208 volts. And again, please remember, plus or minus 10%. Is, uh, is allowable from the power company.